Hi, Gary Zacharias again, weeks five and six. I want to give you an overview for what's coming up with our async class here in uh, spring 23. Uh, a couple more of the English essential videos, if you'd look at those. And then I want to spend most of our time now looking at the next essay coming up. If you turn to page 45, this is essay number three. It's proposing a solution. Um, America has always been good about trying to solve big problems, getting to the moon, for example. We're always gung-ho, we're, we're able to tackle things like the Panama Canal and uh, things like that. So your job is going to be to focus on a problem. And I want to make sure it's something that's local for you. Uh, what you don't want to do is try to take on something like world hunger. I mean, please, uh, you know, people write books on this kind of thing and they endlessly debate it and all and you're not going to be able to solve it. I wouldn't be able to solve it in a three-page paper. So don't tackle something that's monstrous. Um, bullying in school or you know any of these really, really big things. Think of a small focus. I'll give you a couple of examples. One of my students about maybe two years ago talked about her neighborhood park. And at this park, it was, it was a nice park for a while, but people started bringing their dogs, getting them off the leash, and letting them just run all over the place and uh, people were pretty soon stepping in dog poo and it was just it wasn't very conducive for families to be there and she said i need to solve this and i said yeah that sounds good that's a that's a very local concern that she was going to deal with all right here's another one i had a guy about uh, maybe a year ago he said his property his folks property backed onto uh, kind of an open field and several homes shared this big open field. So that was nice. But he said he was really worried that with the dry weather, this is when it was in the middle of a drought and it was near summer. And so the, the area there had a bunch of tall grasses and stuff. And he said, boy, just one match out there, and phew, you know, it'd all go up and it'd probably take out a lot of the homes. So he said he wanted to figure out how do you get all the neighbors to to go into something and i don't know what you know what do you do do you do you cut it down um, do you bring in the fire department to do something and so he tried to tackle something like that um, i had another student who said uh, his problem was he blew through money his, his money just went phew, here today gone tomorrow paycheck one day the you know the amount's gone so he dealt with how he was in the middle of trying to take care of this problem. So that's important that you pick a small issue. And then if you look at paragraph two here, I said what you're going to have to do is probably lay out a series of steps to try to solve the problem. Now there's a key question though, and this is where paragraph two comes in. Why haven't people already solved the problem? Okay, so think about that for a minute. All these problems are out there. There's a road that goes in front of your house and people are going too fast. Why, why haven't they done something about it? And so I've got a list of reasons here, I think, that are keeping people from accomplishing things. And your job is going to have to be to anticipate these problems and figure out how to overcome them. Okay, so here's an example of not overcoming a problem. Years back, Palmar did not have this multi-deck student parking area that it now has. So it just had these big empty fields. So a student was griping about that in, in class one day and he said, we need some kind of parking structure or something. I said, okay, how do you go about that? And he said, just spend the money. And I said, whoa, time out, spend the money. And I said, where's that money coming from? And so he was just gonna kind of have a magic wand. Ding, you know, there's enough money and we solve our problems. Well, that isn't the way the real world works. There are a lot of obstacles and problems that get in our way to try to solve something. And your job is going to be knocking down as many of those arguments and as many of those obstacles as possible. So here's some of the, the reasons I think that people are not solving problems. So do you see my dash there in the third line? Here's one, money. People are not going to be able to solve problems if it's going to cost them a fortune. So let me give you an example. If you tell somebody, hey, you need to stop smoking, go to a smoke clinic an anti-smoking clinic. Well, I don't know, but my guess is they're probably several hundred dollars. Or if you tell somebody you need to eat better, why don't you get on a diet plan, Jenny Craig or something like that. Okay, well, that's fine, but those plans are pretty pricey. Or you tell somebody, you know, we all ought to be in shape. Go to a gym, work out at a gym. Well, gyms are not free. 
So there's the first issue. How can you overcome the problem of money? People need to solve problems, but you've got to somehow either drop that price somehow or get them to figure out how they can do it on a minimal budget. So there's the first issue. Here's another one. Ignorance. Now, I don't mean stupidity. I'm not talking stupidity. Ignorance. So you tell somebody, you need to contact your local um, uh, city representative in government. Really? Who knows who their city government people are? How, where would you find that kind of information? Or you tell somebody, uh, if you just read a book or two, you'll, you'll figure out how to solve the problem. And you, you might even tell them, there are some good books out there. That isn't really helpful until you tell them, here is a book, here is a website, here is a person that you can contact. Right? So give them specifics, because many cases we just don't know. Somebody says, okay, I'll, I'll try to work out. What are some good exercises? And you say, oh, just, they're, they're all over. Look them up on the internet. That's not helpful. People are, are um, uh, concerned. They're looking for answers. So you've got to deal with their ignorance. And then third, time. There's a big one. You tell somebody, okay, you need to work out. It's going to take you an hour and a half a day. What do you think the response is going to be to that? Uh, no thanks. I've got too many other things going on. So you're going to have to figure out how you can work your solution by means of something that's going to be very minimal as far as an impact on their lives. So you're going to have to deal with that one. How about fear? Some people are afraid to do some of the things you want them to do. You say, go work out in a gym. And they say, I don't know. I feel really uncomfortable around a bunch of people there. I don't know them. We're in a locker room situation or I'm not in good shape. I feel kind of stupid. Or you tell somebody, uh, you want to get in shape? Go walking in your neighborhood. Well, maybe they don't live in a really good neighborhood. Or maybe the only time they have is at night. And they don't want to go walking out there in the dark. So you're going to have to overcome some fear problems, maybe, as you're solving the problem. Here's another one. I'm still just reading my list here on, uh, in the second paragraph. Laziness. <laughs> uh, we all think of ourselves as real go-getters, but... Honestly, isn't it easier to sit there and, and watch TV? Isn't it easier to sit there and be on the computer? When we know that that's probably not the best way to live. We need to do something. And the minute you, you try to get people out of that chair, get people moving, you're dealing with lethargy or inertia, whatever you want to call it. Laziness is probably a pretty negative <laughs> way to put it. But how can you get them to overcome the tendency to want to sit there and not do what you'd like them to do? Here's another uh, problem, difficulty. You're asking them to do things that are really difficult for them. So is there a way you can simplify things? Maybe start with small steps and then increase, 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 and then you get more difficult steps later on. Okay, that's possible. Get them to do baby steps at first. Things anybody can do. I remember I read a book one time about uh, uh, being better on the environment. And it was really interesting because it started with really simple things that you can do that wouldn't cause you to break out in a sweat, stuff that was around your house. Pretty soon it got more and more complicated until you're composting. Okay, that's, that's tricky stuff, right? So it started really simple though. In fact, it was broken into three sections, the easy, the medium, and the ones that are really for the hardcore. Well, you'll get to the hardcore if you can solve the easy and the medium. So think about levels of difficulty. So I just said at the end of this paragraph, again on page 45 if I lost you, as part of your solution or your solutions, you're going to have to anticipate these reasons and overcome them. So don't just say, uh, do it, it'll cost you a fortune, but it'll be worth it. Um, I don't think people are going to do that. Don't say, do it, it's going to take uh, all evening, every evening, and people are not going to do it. So have your solutions, yes, have your solutions, but anticipate the yeah, buts that you're going to get. People are going to say, yeah, that's a good idea, but I don't have the time. That's a good idea, but I don't know where to go for information. So that paragraph is crucial, really crucial. And I said, third paragraph, try to come up with a smaller problem rather than solving big world issues. I gave you some example, animal rights, poverty, war, like right now, uh, there's uh, fighting in Ukraine. It'd be great to solve those things, but they're way beyond us, and it would take monster papers to write. 
and you're limited, three, four, or five pages. So keep it short. And again, I always give you a list, of, a bullet point list at the end of the uh, page here that says these are the things you ought to be able to tackle when you're going to do this kind of paper. So that's your third essay, a problem solution. Um, I'm going to ask you to read three sample papers that uh, I actually wrote all three of these. So the first one is how to get good grades in English. Not a bad idea. So take a look at that and see what you think as far as some of these things we've already been talking about as far as how to write a good, make sure you read that page first about how to write a good paper on uh, solving a problem. But then look at my essays and see how I attempted to do the same thing I'm asking you to do. So getting good grades. Second one is how do you buy a good used car? People fear getting out there and getting ripped off and ending up spending a lot of money and ending up with a crummy car. But if you look at new car prices, they're over $40,000 these days. So I don't know how many of us can go out and just lay out 40,000 or spend five, 600 bucks a month for years of trying to pay off a new car. So probably used cars are the way for most of us to go, but it's awfully easy to get ripped off. So there's the second essay. And the third essay is something that I hear over and over again. People deal with putting stuff off, procrastination. In fact, they did a survey one time and uh, they asked students who were having trouble in college, what's, uh, what's the problem? What's causing you to have difficulty? And the number one reason was procrastination. It wasn't their job was too busy or the home life was too chaotic. It was procrastination. I know I should do it. Eh, I'll wait. I, I'll get around to it and it doesn't happen. So those are the three essays I'd like you to read and be thinking about not just reading them, but think about what are some of the devices used in these essays that I could do for my essay. All right, so third thing for this for these next two weeks, your research work. I'm asking you to do some more updates. So let me go to page 97 and uh, show you what we're doing there. You're going to be doing uh, updates four and five. Okay, so what does four do? Four says, now you've told me about your uh, first source, that was uh, update three. For update four, tell me about your second source. And this time I'm asking you to be more specific, doing a summary, a paraphrase, and add an evaluation. That's going to be part of your research paper. You must have an evaluation of every one of your sources. How good, how bad is it? And there's a section in your text that talks about where you can look for evaluations. So that's update four. And update five is do the same thing for your third and your fourth sources. So I'm really asking you to move along in this paper. You should, you need at least 10 sources. I'm asking you by now, which is, uh, this is weeks five and six, at least have four sources, All right? So you're saying, well, that means I'm almost halfway done with the paper. Yeah, because we're almost halfway done with the semester. So uh, keep moving on that. The new device I want you to manage to figure out is called parenthetical referencing when you write your research paper. And I don't know if you've heard that term before, but it used to be called um, footnoting. You'd be reading along in a text, maybe you've seen this, you're reading along in a book and it has a little raised number at the end of a sentence, and you look down the bottom of the page or at the end of the chapter, or maybe the whole book, at the end of the whole book, there's that same raised number, maybe it's a two, and you find out where that came from, or it gives you more information or something. Well, when you're writing a research paper now, footnoting is gone. You do parenthetical references. So take a look. It's page, uh, let me get right page here. It's page 111. So take a look. You'll see what's going on there with that. And then just one part of what I call basic skills that we haven't talked about yet, and that's capitalization and titles. How to do capitalization and titles. Uh, people kind of get messed up on what do you underline? What do you put quotation marks around? So I tried to give you some information on that. So that's it. Those are the things going on in this uh, section of our class. That's weeks uh, five and six. So please, please, please check with me if you have some questions on this. Uh, I'm going over kind of quickly. The book, I hope, explains it. But if you have questions, make sure you read the book first. But then feel free to contact me if you have any questions. Well, I hope it's a good two weeks for you. And uh, thanks for all the hard work. And I'll uh, Talk to you later.